So do I regret having a lip lift? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori Hill. For those of you who haven't been here before, and I do videos about beauty, fashion, and most of all, plastic surgery. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe, like, and comment. So today we're gonna talk about lip lifts. I know a lot of you have been speculating that I have had a lip lift, and you are right. In this video, I'm going to discuss lip lifts in general. I'm gonna talk about if it was worth it or not. I'm gonna describe the lip lift procedure and I'm gonna show you guys some examples of lip lifts. So the lip lift was invented for the sole purpose of decreasing the distance between your nasal base and your upper lip. For some people, this is genetic. A lot of people have a bigger distance between their nose and their lips. It's been theorized that one of the tenets of beauty is the distance between the nasal base and your upper lip should be one to 1.2 centimeters. Now I do not subscribe to this theory and I'll tell you why. To me, other distances matter just as much as your lip to lower nasal base distance. For example, the distance relationship between your lower lip and your chin, as well as the distance between your eyes and the distance between your eyebrow and your upper lid. There are so many beautiful people who have a longer lip. Let's talk about the types of lip lifts. So a while back, they used to do the type of lip lift that would make a scar around the upper lip and it would pull up the skin right here. Now that created just awful scars. So they stopped doing that technique. Nowadays, they do the bullhorn lip lift and it's exactly what you might imagine. You know how a bull has a ring? Well, the scar for a bullhorn lip lift is right here at the nasal base. Let's talk about the types of bullhorn lip lifts there are. The first type is a muscle and skin lip lift. In this lip lift, both the skin above your upper lip and the muscle is cut and pulled up. After the skin and muscle are pulled up, the doctor then stitches your skin and muscle to the base of your nose. And there's a lining called the periosteum. He or she stitches the muscle and skin to the periosteum at the base of your nose. Another name for this is the muscle hemming technique. Hemming is another way to say sewing. So the doctor sews the skin and muscle to the base of your nose. This leads to a couple benefits. There's less scarring because the tension is taken up by your muscle and your skin together. So this type of lip lift lasts much longer than just a skin lip lift. And there's less nasal distortion. The recovery period for this type of lip lift is extremely long. I had this type of lip lift and my recovery was a month. For this muscle hemming technique, the doctor places dissolvable stitches at the base of your nose. The second type of bullhorn lip lift is the type that only uses skin. So the doctor takes the skin of your upper lip only without touching the muscle. He stitches it to the base of your nose. This places a greater tension on that skin without the muscle support. You do end up with more significant scarring that unfortunately does not go away. So there's a new way of doing a lip lift that was developed only a couple years ago. This involves cutting both the muscle and the skin and stitching it to the base of your nose. In this technique, less stitching to the base of your nose is applied, so there's less scarring and less nasal distortion. Not every doctor is doing this technique. You may wanna ask about this technique specifically if you're thinking about doing a lip lift. Lip lifts are done under general anesthesia and they're usually done along with other procedures like a facelift or even a nose job. The recovery period for a lip lift is one month. Now, when I had my lip lift, I would say it was even longer than a month. My recovery period was more like six to eight weeks and I definitely hid out during that time. 
Um, I experienced numbness and pain throughout the first month and I was on painkillers for a solid month. The price of a lip lift really varies with the skill of the doctor and if he pioneered a new lip lift techniques. The price also varies depending on where the doctor is located. So if he's in New York or in LA, generally the prices are higher because the rent is higher in those places. <laughs> Let's talk about the pain level. I would say the pain level is anywhere from moderate to severe. This procedure is no joke. If you're gonna have it done, please prepare for pain. I was on painkillers for a solid month after this procedure and I still experienced numbing and dull aches and pains for months afterwards. Now here are some drawbacks that you need to prepare yourself for. The distortion of your upper lip while talking. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that look amazing in their before and afters but when you see their face in motion, it just looks off. Something just doesn't look right. So if you do decide to go with a particular surgeon, I want you guys to ask if you could meet a couple of their patients that have done the lip lift, just so you could see their face in motion and decide if they look natural. Another drawback is the Cupid's bow will flatten. Although a lot of people get this done because they don't want to continue to get lip fillers, you'll probably find that you will still need lip fillers because of the flat appearance from profile of a lip lift. Another drawback is the nasal base widening. The nostrils will look wider than before the lip lift, and a lot of times they'll stay that way. Another drawback is the whole nose looking pulled down. You could see up your nostrils more. One of the biggest drawbacks of this procedure is your speech can become permanently distorted as well as when you're drinking something, you might drip. When the obiculus oris muscle, the muscle that runs all the way around your mouth is cut, you could lose strength of that muscle. When I had a lip lift, it was still new. And I went with a doctor who was one of the pioneers of lip lift procedures. While this doctor was really good, he still had mixed results. For example, some people looked great, other people not so great. So do I regret having a lip lift? The answer to that question is I'm not sure. There were a lot of benefits for me of getting this procedure. One of the benefits was that prior to the lip lift, you couldn't see my upper teeth when I was talking. I did look kind of strange talking, and you guys know that I was pursuing acting in LA. I really did notice my mouth. It just didn't look right. For that reason, I don't completely regret getting a lip lift. The scar for me, was pretty obvious. There's no way to completely hide the scar. I do hide the majority of the scar with makeup. I can't really go without makeup, and even with makeup, I've had people comment on the scar. If I was to do this procedure all over again, I would have waited five to 10 years because when a procedure is really new, the doctors are still perfecting that procedure. They're kind of learning, watching their patients over the years and seeing what long-term problems they have. Here are some examples of lip lifts so you could judge for yourself if there was an improvement. Now here's my before and one week after surgery.
I am going to Hawaii for the next two weeks. Do you guys want me to do a vlog from Hawaii? Please comment below and let me know if this is something you'd be interested in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a happy and healthy holiday season and I will see you really soon.